Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from shining through? Do you wish that you could see it all made new? Is all creation groaning? It is. Is a new creation coming? It is. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst? It is. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slain. Is he worthy? Blessing and honor and glory. Is he worthy of this? Yes. Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does his spirit move among us? He does. Does Jesus our Messiah hold forever those he loves? He loves. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? He loves. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone whole? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The Lion of Judah, who conquered the grave. He is David's root and the Lamb who died to ransom the slave. From every people and tribe, every nation and tongue, he has made us a kingdom and priest. God to reign with the Son. Is He worthy? Is He worthy of a blessing and honor and glory? Is He worthy? Is He worthy? Is He worthy? Is he worthy? Of the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The news had spread that a man named Jesus was performing miracles, and people followed after Him by the thousands. They had heard 
that he turned water into wine, that the blind were healed, that he had power over the wind and waves. Some even began to wonder if the long-awaited Messiah had finally come. draw water and he asked me for a drink then he said the most curious thing he said whoever drinks of this water will thirst again but whoever drinks of the water that I give him will never thirst but the water that I give him will be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life A nation needing mercy 
fighting for her life. A church that needs revival, a broken man and wife. But in the name of Jesus, chains of bondage fall. Prayers are heard and answered when God's children call. I knew him as well. As a member of the Jewish ruling council, I had heard the words of Jesus, and I knew in my heart that he must be of God, for no one could perform such miraculous signs if God were not with him. So I met with him privately to learn more, to ask questions. I can still hear his words in my heart. He said, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. And everyone who believes in him will have everlasting life. Yes. 
the crowds grew that followed after Jesus. Multiplied thousands would come. The sick, the lame, the downcast, the outcast. And he, he had compassion on them all, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. As the Passover drew near, we traveled with Jesus to Jerusalem. And when the people heard that the Lord was on his way, they took palm branches and they came out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Thank you. 
Several days later, on the night of the Passover, we met with the Lord in an upper room. While eating, Jesus spoke of his death, of his betrayal, and of course, I was quick to boast that I would willingly lay down my life for him. Will you really lay down your life for me? He asked. I tell you the truth, Peter. This very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny three times that you even know me. Then, knowing fully what was to come, he offered these words of comfort. Let not your hearts be troubled. You will grieve, but your grief will be turned to joy. Looking back, I can see it all so clearly. But not that night. The night we partook the Passover meal with the Passover lamb.
Jesus, my son, I still remember when the angel came to me and said, you are highly favored and the Lord is with you. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will be with child and will give birth to a son and you will call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. Yet now, he's been arrested, beaten, scourged, spat upon, and mocked. And though Pilate found no fault in him, he's being led to his death at a place called Golgotha. It's as if a sword has pierced my heart.
How wonderful it is that the story of Jesus Christ does not end with death. It ends in victory. You see, on the third day, several women went to the grave to anoint his body and found that the stone had been rolled away. When Peter and I heard the news, we rushed to the tomb and we found it was empty. Jesus had risen just as he said he would. Not a word was heard at the tomb that day Just the shuffling of soldiers' feet As they guard in the grave One day, two days, three days had passed Could it be that Jesus had breathed his last? Could it be that his father had forsaken him, turned his back on his son, despising our sin? All hell seemed to whisper, just forget him, he's dead. Did the father look down to his son and said, No more. 
we stand before you to testify to this truth that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. He came to seek and to save the lost. We are witnesses of his life, his death, and his resurrection. He has overcome the grave. Jesus is alive forevermore.
That was wonderful, wasn't it? I want to read a couple of verses to you from 1 John chapter 5, all on the subject of overcoming. John said, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. And there have been some great victories in human history. The victory of General Washington over Lord Cornwallis at Yorktown. The victory of the Duke of Wellington over Napoleon Bonaparte at Waterloo. The victory of the Allied forces at Normandy as they sealed the fate of Adolf Hitler. But the greatest victory in human history was won by Jesus Christ at the cross of Calvary. Amen. And it was confirmed three days later at the empty tomb. We hear his victor's cry in Revelation chapter 1, where he said, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. And only six hours, one Friday, the Lord Jesus Christ single-handedly defeated the forces of sin, death, hell, and the grave. What a victory. And from that singular victory has come billions of victories in the lives of his followers down throughout the years. We're overcomers because he overcame. And tonight we met five such overcomers. We met the Apostle John. The Apostle John had to overcome his anger. He and his brother were called the sons of thunder. He was a rough and tumble fisherman with a fiery temper. But the Lord Jesus transformed John into John the Beloved, the disciple of love. And he became this wonderful combination of toughness and tenderness that the Lord Jesus used so greatly. We met the woman at the well tonight. She overcame an immoral lifestyle. All her life she had tried to satisfy the thirsting of her soul with romance, with men, with sex. But one day the Lord Jesus met her at that well and offered her a drink of living water. He satisfied her soul. He changed her life. And by the end of that day, the woman at the well had brought her entire village to Christ. Perhaps it was Nicodemus that had to overcome the most. Nicodemus had to overcome dead religion, a self-righteous spirit. And Nicodemus thought that he could work his way into the kingdom. But he went to see Jesus by night, and the Lord Jesus told him in John chapter 3, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. Nicodemus, it's not by work, it's by birth. Nicodemus, the father's house is not full of burdened slaves. It's full of born sons and daughters. And he told him in that wonderful verse, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Nicodemus, it's not a matter of achieving. It's a matter of believing. Believe in Jesus Christ and you'll be born again. And most think that Nicodemus did believe and he became a follower of Jesus Christ. Mary, the mother of Jesus, had a lot to overcome. And she had to overcome fear and a shattered reputation. You see, no one in Mary's life except for Joseph really understood what the virgin birth was. And she lived with the stigma all of her life. It was a scandal. But Mary decided that she would rather live for the pleasure of God than the approval of men, and she overcame her fear. And aren't you glad tonight that fear can be overcome? Peter, we love Peter, don't we? And Peter overcame failure. On the day of our Lord's death, Peter denied the Lord Jesus three times. I think that's just about the worst thing anybody can do. And with any other master, Peter would have been washed out. 
written off, but not with the Lord Jesus. On the day of his resurrection, Peter was the first disciple that got to see the resurrected Christ. When Peter quit the ministry thereafter, the Lord Jesus showed up on the seashore again. He reaffirmed his love to Peter. He recommissioned Peter into the ministry. And Peter the failure became Peter the leader of the early church. It was Peter who preached the first Christian sermon on the day of Pentecost and thousands of people came to Christ. It was Peter who opened the door of the church to the Gentiles. It was Peter that wrote two books of the New Testament. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I think Peter shows us that faults can be forgiven. And with the Lord Jesus, failure is never final. And all around you tonight, sitting in your pew or perhaps somewhere in your section, is someone who could share a personal story with you about overcoming through Jesus Christ. People that have overcome addictions. People whose marriages were crumbling. People whose kids had gone wayward. People who faced disease and came to the doorstep of death. And they could say that by faith in Jesus Christ, they've overcome. He's an overcoming Savior. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ tonight, you need to know that 2,000 years ago the Lord Jesus went to the cross of Calvary to win for you a victory that you could never win for yourself. And tonight I'm talking about a personal relationship. I'm not talking about church. I'm not talking about religion and baptism and good works and confession and catechism. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about knowing Jesus. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages or the payment of sin is death. And it's not just talking there about a physical death. Death in the Bible is separation. Revelation 21 tells us about the second death. The wages of sin is to be eternally separated from God in a real place called hell. Listen to me tonight. We're all sinners. And somebody's going to pay for your sin. You're going to pay for it yourself in a real place called hell. Or you're going to put your faith and trust in what Jesus Christ did on that cross. And you'll let him pay for it for you. We owed a debt of sin that we could not pay. Praise the Lord. Jesus paid a debt. He did not owe. Amen. And the Bible says tonight that the victory of Jesus Christ can be yours through repentance and through faith. Oh, folks, the way to heaven is not a Baptist way. It's not a Methodist way. It's not a Catholic way, a Presbyterian way. The way to heaven is a Jesus way. Amen. Listen to what he said in Mark chapter 1, verse 15. He said, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. According to Jesus Christ, how does a person get to heaven? Well, number one, he's got to repent. The word repent simply means to change your mind. It's to change your mind about your sin and your ability to save yourself. If you're here tonight and you're willing to admit that you're a sinner, that you deserve hell, that you can't save yourself, then I want you to know you're a halfway to salvation. But there's another part. Jesus said repent and believe the gospel. The gospel just means good news. It's the good news that Jesus died for our sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again according to the scriptures. Believing is putting your confidence and your trust completely in what Jesus has done for you. Not in your church, not in your religion, not in your baptism, not in your good works, in Jesus. John said, Who is he that overcometh the world? but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Can I ask you a personal question tonight? Has there ever been a time and place in your life that you recognized you were a sinner? That you couldn't save yourself and you were on your way to hell? But you believed that Jesus died for you, that he was buried and that he rose again. And you turned from your sins and by faith asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. I did that as a six-year-old boy after seeing Jesus change my home, and I've been saved ever since. 
Has there ever been a time in your life where you put your personal faith and trust in Jesus Christ? If there hasn't been here in just a moment, we're going to give you an opportunity, and I'd urge you to take it, an opportunity to pray a prayer of faith and put your trust in Him. I think through the music and the scripture that we've shared tonight, there's also a message for believers. Major N. Thomas said, the death of Christ for us was to put the life of Christ in us. Ladies and gentlemen, the overcomer lives in you. And if you're living a defeated, powerless life tonight, it must be because you've stopped living by faith in Jesus Christ. This is the victory, John said, that overcomes the world, even our faith. So if you're a believer tonight, but you're defeated in the bondage of some sin, I think tonight you need to make a decision. Not to be resaved. We only get saved once. You need to make a decision to recommit your life to Jesus Christ, to walk by faith. I want to speak to every person here as I close tonight. You may have walked in this room on Easter Sunday defeated. Defeated by the guilt of your past. Defeated by the bondage of sin. Defeated by the fear of what will happen to you when you die or where you'll spend eternity. You may have walked in this room defeated, but that's not how you have to leave. You can leave here in victory because of what Jesus did on Good Friday and Easter Sunday. 2,000 years ago, you can leave here tonight an overcomer. Amen. Let's pray together, may we? Father, thank you for the marvelous music. Thank you for this reminder of the victory that is available to us through Jesus Christ. I'm convinced many of your people are living in defeat when you've already bought and paid for their victory. If there's someone here tonight that's never been saved, the Bible way would just save them. Help them to choose to put their faith and trust in you and for your people. Help us to stop living such defeated Christian lives. Help us to live in victory. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I have just one question for you tonight. Is there anybody here that would be honest enough to say, if I were to die right where I sit, I'm not 100% sure that I would go to heaven. I'm not sure there's ever been a time and place in my life where I prayed and asked Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. Pastor, I'm not saved, or I'm not sure about it. Would you please pray for me? If that's you tonight with every head bowed and every eye closed and only God and me looking, would you just lift your hand with mine? I'd like to pray for you. Would you hold it up this evening? I'm not saved or I'm not sure. Would you please pray for me? Hold it up. We want to give you an opportunity tonight, right where you sit, to pray and ask Jesus to be your Savior. Did you know you can do that right in your heart? Right, right where you're at. If you'd like to be saved tonight, I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer. And it's not the words of this prayer. They're not magic words. It's your heart putting its faith and trust in Jesus Christ and calling upon the name of the Lord for salvation. If that's what you'd like to do tonight, from your heart and to the Lord, pray this prayer with me. And Father in heaven, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I do not deserve heaven. But I believe you love me. That you sent Jesus to die for me. I believe that he was buried and that he rose again. The best that I know how, I'm turning from my sin and by faith receiving your son. Please forgive my sins. Come into my life and be my savior. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, with every head still bowed and every eye closed, if you prayed that prayer for the first time in your life tonight, would you let me know about it? Would you just lift your hand with mine? I prayed tonight and I asked Jesus to save me. Tonight I've entered into his victory. God bless you. Would you hold your hand up? I prayed to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's wonderful. Now, Christians, I've got a question for you. How many of you could honestly say this evening 
I know I'm living in the victory and Jesus died for me to have. As far as I know, there's nothing between my soul and the Savior tonight. I'm living a victorious Christian life. If that's you and that's your testimony, would you lift your hand with mine? Oh, that's many of you. But as I scan the auditorium, many of you are our Sunday night church folks, and we're so glad you're here. There are many of you that could not raise your hand. And I want to ask you, if you won't get right with God on Easter Sunday, when will you? What will it take for you to have the victory Jesus wants you to have? What more does God have to do to show his love for you? How many of you would say tonight, Pastor Gillette, I need to get right with God and I know it. If that's you, would you lift your hand with mine? God bless you. Wonderful. Father, thank you again for the wonderful music that we've heard. Thank you for what you've done in our hearts tonight. It's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, here in just a moment, the choir is going to sing again. But I'd like to ask the lights to be raised and we're going to stand to our feet. And we're going to receive our regular Sunday evening offering. Again, the choir will close, so if you would, let's stand.
It's been a wonderful day, hasn't it? We praise the Lord for folks that have trusted Christ in just about every service. Shake hands with someone tonight. Tell them Happy Easter. Have a great week, and God bless you. Thanks for watching the Worth Baptist Church live stream. If you made a decision today, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to contact us on our website or simply give us a call. Worth Baptist Church exists to glorify God by making disciples in Fort Worth, the Metroplex, and around the world. We're committed to reaching the lost in our community, growing new believers into lifelong followers of Christ, and sending disciple makers both locally and globally. We hope you'll join us the next time we gather as we continue reaching, growing, and sending.